So we're here this morning. This is the very first morning of our dig at Gallows Hill. A few of the group members and Dave Pollock and Kevin Barton are all here. So at the minute we're just really setting up, but it's a very exciting morning for us all. We're just setting up fencing at the minute and we're hoping to do a little bit of testing, which Dave will be doing. So the dig will start today, so Friday the 2nd, and it's going to continue now for the next seven days. So we hope to have piles of activity, loads of fun going on. The big dig will be here tomorrow with children, so all great excitement and we're really, really looking forward to the next few days. Well, here I am back at uh, Gallows Hill. It's June uh, 2017. And this is where it all started uh, with Gallows Hill and the research here carried out by the community group uh, at uh, the County Museum. The work started off in 2015 with some community geophysical surveys and a very wet Saturday, a training weekend funded by Waterford County Council. And that turned up a potential of a ditch around the outside of the mound. And one of the questions being asked about the mound was, what, what is the mound? Is it a mott and bailey? Could it be a barrow, which would be a lot earlier? And the finding of a ditch, or the potential of a ditch being here, uh, was an interesting finding. This led on to further geophysical surveys, magnetic radiometry surveys, and culminated in a radar survey uh, in 2016. All the surveys showed uh, there was something around the mound. They didn't all coincide with each other, but generally within a zone of about 15 metres out from the mound, there seemed to be something going on. Uh, something that could be as shallow as maybe 20 centimetres or maybe even over a metre in depth. And the only way really to find out what, what it is that's happening around the mound is by excavation, and that's what's happening today. This place, uh, Gallows Hill, has always sort of surprised me because it shouldn't be here. It's obviously a castle, it has been used as a castle at some stage, one of the Norman earthen timber castles, but it's just incredibly close to Dungarvan. Um, it's about a, less than a mile out of the medieval town. It's looking straight down the medieval main street and it's on the promontory that Dungarvan's on, but it's right at the neck of the promontory. So there's water on one side, water on the other side. It sits slap in the middle with the two medieval roads from Dungarvan, one to each side of it, only about 150 metres away on each side, something like that. So this, this castle here is a very odd one and it was only a couple of weeks ago I was reading something and I suddenly think I know what it's about. It is actually a siege work. This is the castle that somebody has put up as a counterfort against the castle in Dungarvan. Someone is trying to take the castle in Dungarvan and they've left a garrison here looking down the main street of the medieval town at a safe distance, probably con con uh, controlling a lot of the water supply because there's a, a famous water supply right beside us and they're laying siege essentially to Dungarvan. That's what I think we'll find. So hopefully we'll get a date from the bottom of this mound. We're just nibbling into the edge of it and we should pick up a bit of ground at the base of it and we should find a bit from a bonfire or something just before they built the castle here and we should get a date from some charcoal there and we might get an idea of the depth of the ditch around it and with any luck we'll see one if there's anything on the outside of that ditch where there's anything around this that was attached to it and two whether uh, I've entirely forgotten what two is now oh yeah two how they actually built the mound there are various ideas on how they managed to get these mounds to stand up so extraordinarily high without just collapsing so it's too heavy yeah. I don't know what it is um, might be some kind of a stony it in the look at my spearhead <laughs> all right yeah, yeah. a yeah. mess of yeah, straw yeah yeah you're not no, allowed to touch it so, yeah. that's it? more of a find that's that's <laughs> real <laughs> I would, yeah. No, I would use this, otherwise you're going to damage your wrist trying to track it down to that. It's really quite hard, this ground. I think it's a bit of uh, what used to be called furnace lining. Alright. It's to do with smithing or smelting. Probably <laughs> iron. Probably out of a smithy or something. But could be because it's furnace lining. Mm. Yeah, it's going to go back a long way. <laughs> it's very likely to be Let's celebrate. early medieval. <laughs> yeah, medieval or even early it's medieval kind of thing. Chance that certainly when you see it from the top of the mound in the right light, it looks as though it's concentric with that and it's going to bend round. 
come round. You can't really tell if it's bending actually when you can only see two meters two of meters. it. But it fits so neatly with the whole bend on the hillside. That topography that I could see where when I put the dashed line in without looking at Kevin's stuff, when I said, this is the edge of the ditch, my God, isn't it wide? It just fits that exactly. But it looks as though it's two ditches now. Unless we find that that lump of subsoil there is actually a load of crud that somebody threw in into a very wide ditch. But I don't think so. And what would two ditches mean? Two ditches means no one's seen the likes of this before. Or... It sort of makes it not a mop, though. It ditches. makes it more than a mop, yeah. It could be that they stuck a mop in the middle of a ring fort. Something like yeah, that. Yeah. So that really this is ring fort, that's mop. Yeah. It could be something like that. So the, the first thing today that we're going to be doing is getting everything to a nice photographic point where we can get a photograph of it showing all the ditches and things yep. and then we can draw it, we can get a plan of the whole thing. Now as we start drawing it there'll be bits that we can go ahead and take out even though they haven't been drawn. So the fill of the ditch down there, that can come out, that can start coming out even whilst these bits with subsoil are being drawn this will be another one where we can actually make a start on this. Right. Even though it hasn't been drawn at that level, there's not going to be anything to draw but the edges. So yeah. all we need to draw on that is the edges. And then the whole middle bit we can take on down until it's more interesting. Uh, same with the ditch over there. Get the edge on and we can take the we can just take the middle down, 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 gently by hand. But those bits where we've got a lot of subsoil, that's all just going to be careful stuff planning it as it is, every stone, and taking out all those those little bits of dirty fill. Yeah. Taking them all out individually. And the same up there, same thing will happen up there. Right, well we're now a good halfway through. We've got a couple of good days yet to go anyway. Tuesday now, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. About three days anyway. We have ditches, ditches rather than a ditch. We appear to have two ditches around the mound. One quite close to it, the obvious one, and then we have another one, I don't know if you can see it, just down here, between Danny and Moorish is actually digging the edge of it down there. That ditch is lovely because it's got real edges. The one beyond it, the ditch that we always expected, the one for the, for the mott, seems to have a very steep side on it on this side, and we haven't got the other side yet, it's just tucked under the edge of the mound. Now we're going into the edge of the mound, so we should have that ditch edge, I would say, within about an hour or so, quite soon anyway. In addition to that, we've got stuff going on on the outside, beyond the ditches. In front of me here, we've got another ditch, if you like, going at a funny angle, nothing at all to do with the mott, and I don't think it's desperately old. It is old, it's nothing to do with the housing estate, but it's not going to go back as far as the mop. Pretty certainly, I'd say it's something to do with the fields. A lot of stone lying around in it, but it's at a funny angle. So we'll, it'll take a little while to work out exactly what that's doing. Bait marks or ard marks, these early plough marks, just scrapes, mm. really. And they should be there. And when you, when you have the ground cleared onto the yellow, when, this, the, when the subsoil is showing up, the little bits of a different colour are showing up at that level. They're doing the work they will suddenly, you'll suddenly see that they're in stripes. And they're the old plough marks, hard marks, bait. Okay, quick update. Not entirely sure at the moment whether we got one ditch or two, but I think we're back to two ditches. We seem to have two because the one nearest us seems to have real edges. I'm quite impressed with them. I think they are real sides. The problem is the one beyond it, the one that they built the mot from, seems to have a vertical face on this side, which is quite unlikely. But we'll know a bit more when I've done a little a bit more footling around on it. Vertical face. A vertical yes. side to the ditch. Right. It's just a bit too steep. Yeah. It's very, very unlikely. So I'm going to do a little bit of work around there and hopefully have that sorted. On the far side, where you can see ledges going up the hillside there, those ledges are kind of only half real. They're half real because we're getting a grey silt there, which might actually be the old ground surface underneath the mound, but it's coming out much further than I thought, which would mean that someone has taken a big lump out the side of the mound, which I think is very unlikely. However, if we only had one ditch, that nice clean stuff in the middle of the ditch would have had to come from somewhere, so it might have come out of the side of the mound and they might have stuck it there. 
I just don't think that's right, but it's a possibility. Do you think, is, there, is it possible that there isn't a ditch by the mound? There must be a ditch. There's that's certainly a ditch there, yeah. And the grey silt that uh, um, Eddie and Paul are coming down onto there, which is seems to be flattish and suddenly going steeply up the mound, or, well, steeply in towards the mound, that kind of a profile looks more like something that's slumped off the mound rather than the old ground underneath it. So you think it but it's not right? going up that steeply, so it's still a bit iffy, you know. I just want to be absolutely certain that we don't dig the old ground away looking for the old ground. Yeah. That would be really embarrassing. <laughs> so. Oh, we will. That's no, we will. Down, that's we why will. I'm down we there, will. just to make sure that we don't yeah. dig the old yeah. ground away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we will definitely get to the old ground. We got till Thursday. We'll get there. We'll definitely get there. Yeah, and we'll have we'll have these ditches resolved today. I mean, we'll know exactly, if not by lunchtime, by oh, the early lovely. afternoon. So we'll we'll know what we've got. We're we're just on the edge of it. Yeah, yeah. And in addition, we've got stuff out here outside the ditches, which I think and I, I can't prove it at the moment, I think is more recent than both ditches. I think it's something to do with the fields and things around here. But it's much older than the housing estates, whatever it is. So we should, we should have a good idea of that. In fact, we should have a lump taken out of it today. So we should see it. Should see what it is, probably a little ditch of some kind. Some kind of a little field boundary ditch or something like that, drain. Right. So that's it, two big ditches and something much more manageable over here. And we'll get them all sorted. You're pretty convinced you have two ditches now? No, well, no, only no, half convinced, just, yeah. so I still want to do a bit just of work. Here, yeah. yeah. Right, you all, I think I have mm -hmm. to go away anyway now. Right. To the doctor's, what time is it? They have 11 minutes. Mm, 25 past, Teddy. Sat around for 100. Right. OK, bang on cue. Last day and everything is kind of making sense. We have not two ditches but three or four around our castle mound. We have one that definitely belongs to it, which is relatively shallow and we've had that all the way through and that's where most of the people are working at the moment. We have one outside it that we've had all the way along, which is deep and fairly pointy, a fairly V-shaped ditch, which probably has nothing to do with our original castle now and we now have a third v-shaped ditch which is cut through the one next to the castle there now by the time that third ditch was cut the sharp one the old ditch had filled in uh, it had silted up the hill had collapsed down the side of it so that cut was made through the fairly collapsed edge of the mound and we think that cut was made around the 16th, 17th century, something like that. Somebody appears to be re-fortifying the mound. They're putting a top back on it. They're steepening up the sides again. And that's the stuff that we've been looking at. So when we look to the end of the trench there, at the very end, we can pick up the actual side of the mound. Or the side of the mound when it was just starting to decay a bit so that was in the early decades or something that it was standing. Outside that, on this side, on my side of the trench behind Joe there, we've got a whole load of grey silt, which is the top of the mound sliding down. It's kind of rolling down, folding down like a carpet into sort of sheep tracks on the side of the mound. There it is, like ledges coming down there. Well, that stuff has been falling off the top of the mound, forming a topsoil, and it is essentially a buried soil, which has then been cut by our late ditch. Uh, this one right next to me here, this ditch, is also probably late. They're, the two of them are probably of the same vintage, these two V-shaped ditches. And I would say there's something to do with the trouble in the 16th, 17th century. Can uh, the... the uh, the wars of those kind of centuries. There was a lot going on and there was artillery and somebody who was interested in looking at Dungarvan was probably using this as a kind of a lookout post and was fortifying it. 
quite a lot with these ditches around the side of it, so the mound itself was changing. That would certainly make sense of the grey stuff that we're finding at the end, which is the in-between, that's the mound starting to dissolve, to decay, to fall down. We find there's an awful lot of that happening before those late ditches are cut. So, at the moment, have we found anything about the structure of the mound? Absolutely nothing, because we've only just got to the edge of the mound, right at the far end of the trench there, the original mound. And have we found the edge of our original ditch against the original mound? Possibly. We might just get it, but we appear to have a fourth ditch just at that point there, which is going to be very early. It's something to do with the mound, but we haven't sorted that one out completely. Whether we will or not is another matter.